there is football going on. So I don't know if Joe is here, but I am here for the beer. I don't know. Does this count as football? What's, what's that supposed to mean? They aren't playing. Oh, wait, that wasn't a touchdown? No, he knocked him out of bounds. Yeah. At like the three yard line. They brought it back to like the seven yard line. I mean, he knocked him out of bounds. So, you said it was episode 89. Yes. Yeah, what, what document are you in? Well, originally when I pulled it up, it said. Wait a second. How did we get the ball? Are you, again, are you going to be able to record? Because. What? <laughs> ish is happening. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Baltimore Ravens guys look so confused and PO'd. <laughs> I am very so. It was we'll Baltimore. Wait for the replay. I mean, Zach Taylor looks confused. <laughs> okay, so we're in. We're pushing, 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 and ball pops out. Oh. Bengals player catches it. It never touches the ground. So that's a live ball. That is a very live ball. It's a pass. No, that wasn't a pass. That was him trying to get the ball over. It was like a pass. It was exactly like a pass, though. <laughs> Ravens, dude. The You need to go to the purple and white, not the... Well, no, the ball got knocked out of his hands, <laughs> and the Bengal, was, Bengal Hubbard was just like, bam, this is mine now. So that happened. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to the Craft Parenting Podcast, the podcast about two Cincinnati craft beer lovers with a parenting... Bengals game problem. We have a Bengals game problem. <laughs> it's a lot better now. It, it is, because <laughs> that was... I don't know if you're going to make that the intro. You should just make that the intro. <laughs> Cold open, <laughs> intro music, <laughs> and then this. <laughs> we'll see how I'm feeling. Um, and how the the playoffs go. Uh, my name is Joe Ludwig. With me is my lovely wife and co-host, Caroline. Yeah, so we have out-of-town beers, um, and we're going to talk about them. And we are watching the Bengals on the first, hopefully, of all of the... Hopefully, they go all the way. I'm at the edge of my seat. Why'd you pay for it? You don't need to pay, you'll pay for the whole seat, but you'll only use the edge. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. Or how's it? Bum, 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 bum. I'm, trying, I'm trying to do like the horn thing, which normally I can do. Bum, 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 bum. I don't know. I have, this is not going great. I have no idea what you're talking about. You know, like when they do like the Friday, Friday, Friday down at the big sports arena complex, monster trucks live and ready to rumble. You'll pay for your whole seat, but you'll only need the edge. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Everybody else gets this reference and is judging you for not getting the reference. I think that should be a button. <laughs> pay for the whole seat. But you'll only need the edge. You're in charge of the buttons, so you can make it happen. Mm-hmm. Hey everyone, Joe Ludwig here with the one and only Caroline. Hey! Before we get to the main topic of today's episode, we wanted to pause briefly and tell you about how you can support the show. So if you enjoy listening to the podcast and reading our blog posts every week, then you now have the opportunity to support the show through Buy Me A Coffee. Here's what you need to know. It's super easy to do. You don't have to set up an account to contribute. You have options. Send us a one-time donation or sign up as a member to contribute on a monthly or yearly basis. Plus, you can unlock exclusive content. To learn more about how you can support the Craft Parenting Podcast through Buy Me A Coffee, click the link in the show notes. And now, back to the show. <laughs> Why is he in oxygen? Because he just ran like half. He ran like all of the field. He 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 is a linebacker. 
His job is to block things and maybe move short distances, not run a hundred yards. And he just sprinted a hundred yards. So that's what's up with that. Tonight, we are drinking beers from Big Timber Brewing Company in West Virginia. And our first beer of the night is a Timber Cutter IPA. The description on the can, um, it is, I am so out of practice. Um, it is 98 calories, 3.65 carbs per 12 ounce serving and gluten reduced. Um, that was way easier to see than the 4.0% ABV. And this is a 16 ounce can. Um, the description on the side of the can is you are looking at a great tasting medium bodied IPA that clocks in at 98 calories and 3.65 carbs per 12 ounces. So 130 calories and 4.9 carbs. If you decide to be a beast and drink the whole can, we found big flavor and aroma and chopped down everything else. It's gluten reduced and 4% ABV to boot. And then they have a recycle They're on their recycle symbol. It says mother nature is not your mother. Pick up after yourself and recycle. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I need to put that in the break room at work. Your mother does not work here. Get your ish out of the fridge that you have not eaten. I'm typically not an IPA person, but this is... This is a good one. This is a good one. It's kind of refreshing. It doesn't have as that like... That's a little the, hoppy, but it's not like yeah. super hoppy. It's like bright. It's enough where, yeah, you, it's an IPA, but it's not in your face. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was almost a sack. Oh. So let me pull this up. Okay, so that's our first beer of the night. We will have a few other beers as we go through. As I, I guess, lead the show, just push the board closer this way so I can hit all the buttons. Well, tell me what button you want to hit. No, just push the board this way because you're, you're in Bengals La La Land. Why did you say we could record? I mean, we... Because we need to record. To be fair, we needed to record this episode like four days ago, but both of us kept falling asleep. And then we'd wake up at 1030 like, uh, where is my bed? Where is my spouse? Uh, let's find out and get into bed. So let's continue on. So our main topic tonight is a two-parter. It is moving, and it's about Big Timber Brewing. So we'll just dive into Big tim- Timber Brewing first, because that'll be the shorter of the two. Yeah. Things. I'm excited. They're from West Virginia, right? Yeah, in the heart of Appalachia. So come on down, darling, and get yourself a good old-fashioned beer. I-, I don't think that they say that, but now I say that, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so the story for Big Timber Brewing. Big Timber Brewing's brewery and taproom is located in the heart of Appalachia, Elkins, West Virginia. Our name pays homage to the surrounding forests and the industry that built our community. We make beer we love and enjoy doing it, creating a product that we, our town, and our state can take pride in. What started as a dream became a reality in 2014 when our first keg went out the door, and our commitment to our beer, our community, and our dream continues to grow stronger every day. That's pretty nifty. Uh, This is a low-cal beer, right? It is. So it's low-cal, low-carb, and gluten-reduced. So I wouldn't, like, I wouldn't say this would be fine if you have celiacs, but, like, if you are, like, I need to not have all of the gluten, like, you'd be okay with this. But I'm not a doctor, so don't at me with, you took my medical advice and it was crappy advice. I like how it gives... 98 calories, 3.65 carbs per 12 ounces, and it's a 16-ounce can. Yeah. So, um, Elkins is a city in West Virginia in Randolph County. It was incorporated in 1890 and named in honor of Stephen Benton Elkins, Elkins, a U.S. senator from West Virginia. The population was about 7,000 at the 2020 census. So they're not like super big, but they're also probably out in the holler in West Virginia and getting from holler to holler is pretty hard. Okay. How far away is that? Let me pop it. Like how over the border of Ohio is it? 
It would take us five hours and 45 minutes to get there from our house. And we'd go through Chilla Coffee to get there. Nice. And Athens, I think. Or Athens yes, candy. and Athens as well. Um, but uh, we've had an eventful 2023. We have. And like the end of our 2022 yeah. was pretty crazy. Always chaotic. But I mean, we kind of chose this chaos in a way. We we brought this upon ourselves. Yeah. So we decided that we were going to pack up and move house. And we were going to move super far. We're moving from the west side of Cincinnati to... Even more West Side Cincinnati. <laughs> <laughs> it's like 10 to 15 minutes door to door between the two houses. That's right. We moved even further west. Yep. So now instead of West Side being our closest brewery, 13 Below is our closest brewery. But West Side's still not that far away. Because right. West Side, West Side. That's right. <laughs> uh, we're a lot closer to downtown as far. Well, I mean, we have access to downtown yeah because i mean technically 13 below is in downtown is in cincinnati like the city limits but that's not downtown cincinnati no i'm talking about downtown because because you can just hop on to 50 yeah um so we moved house we we we've been looking at houses for a very long time um, we drive around when the kids nap, which I, 10 out of 10, do recommend. If your kid falls asleep in the car, just start driving around your city because you never know what you're going to find. We found some cool new hangout spots by doing that. And we also, like, had conversations about what do we like in neighborhoods? What do we not like in neighborhoods? What do we like in houses? What do we not like in houses? So when we went to actually find our next home, there wouldn't be any kind of question of, well, I like this, but does Joe like that? We knew we were on the same page. So, we, so we, we've been driving around since like the spring, summer. Yeah. Like just, we knew we wanted a two-car garage, which is laughable now. We'll tell you why later. <laughs> it's a two-and-a-half car garage that you currently can fit zero cars in. <laughs> but uh, like... We wanted a neighborhood... Yes, a neighborhood with sidewalks so the kids could walk from house to house, Safe, have a place to safely. ride their bike without being in the road. Yeah. And um, we wanted some kind of like community, which we have met the community. And we have some interesting stories about that, too. And we've only been in this house for a week as of this recording. Um, so after Thanksgiving, you know, it was right before Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm was when we hopped on this crazy train um we put in an offer for a house um after we viewed some houses our offer was accepted very quickly and then we had to start packing up our house so we could get our house ready to put up on the market and so thanksgiving was spent like with friends and family and starting to pack up the house. Um, Christmas was very light decoration wise because any decoration that I put up would have to get taken down and packed away. Excuse me. Or wouldn't be able to get packed away. So would just get randomly transported in the van. And that was something that we wanted to avoid if possible. Oh my goodness. Excuse me. This beer is making me burpy. And, like, Christmas was crazy because we closed on our new house January 6th. So Christmas wasn't, like, a big hoop de doo with tons and tons of presents because I was like, if we give the kids tons and tons of presents, I have to move all of those presents to my new house. And I already have, like, 5,000 pounds of toys that I am moving to the new house. I don't need to add another 100 pounds of toys. But fortunately for the kids, the grandparents more than made up for that. Um, so the kids got some very big toys that are still at their grandparents' house, but are going to come over to the new house within the next week or two. <laughs> so 
so they will get to fully enjoy them all of the time as opposed to just whenever I'm at Oma and Opa's house or Grandma and Grandpa's house. Yeah. Um, and then... So all of our stuff is in boxes right now. We're living in a boxes. Yeah, the majority of our stuff is currently in boxes. Um, we do... We The first thing we did was get the internet all set up. And now we have a temporary solution, subscription service so we can get the football games. Because we're in a little bit of a hole now, so we don't. Our current antenna is not sufficient to stream local TV. Um, like, I don't know that it will be. I'm not sure. Well, we, we'll probably have to get a new one, but I don't. I, don't, I mean that that antenna is like almost nine years old. There's nothing wrong with it, though. No, but we bought like a cheap one, so we probably need a nicer one. Or we can try putting that one up in the master bedroom. I don't know where we're going to put it, though, but um, anyways, so, but Christmas was not just, was more chaotic, not just because we were getting ready to move, we were getting ready to put our house up on the market, and like December 22nd or 23rd, I think it was like the 22nd, um, the photographer came through our house to take photos, so it was like, that's when we started living truly in boxes because like half of your stuff has to get packed away Mm -hmm. to be hidden from all the people that are going to go through the house. But fortunately for us, we had a very easy time selling our old house. Um, It was on the market for eight hours. Yeah. It was on the market for a grand total of eight hours before we were under contract, which was crazy. We put it on the market the day after christmas so december 26th yep december 26th and the person who bought it really wanted it and we were very elated by that so we will soon only have one house in cincinnati i think as of like two days from now because right now we have two houses in cincinnati and it's crazy oh okay i see what you're saying well, I mean, we just closed on the new house, the old house. Yeah. Well, so technically we closed on it, but we still have it for a few more days. So I'm just saying whatever day we don't have the house is the day that we close. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so Christmas was really, so Christmas was crazy because after, because our house was going to have showing, well, showings that turned into showing. The day after Christmas. So all of the kids' Christmas presents had to get shoved in a hole somewhere or, like, boxed up. So the house would be nice for people or person to go through it. Um, But then we were really quick with getting in an offer. And they wanted a really short closing. So everything just kind of ramped up to 11 very quickly. And it was like, ah. (laughs) <laughs> which i haven't done that for a few days joe so you're welcome oh it's all in my headphones <laughs> in, in stereo it'll it'll be a button soon i'm sure so we got access to our new house january 6th the movers came january 7th and we have been living in the house since and slowly painfully slowly unpacking things i've got our wood sign up above the fireplace though which is of our ohio that says ludwig established 2015 (laughs) so that's i love that it's the perfect place for it it's like i planned it Mm -hmm. we got the tvs mounted because we don't have like feet for our tv anymore because we just pitched it when we mounted everything and small children require some kind of visual stimulation when they get very, very tired. Um, and especially with, we didn't know how the kids would oh. react to being in a new house. Um, it's kind of hit or miss, usually very miss on how they sleep when we move, when we like go to a new space. Like if we go on vacation, the first night or two are just very painful for sleep and naps. But usually, like, if we put on a show that they've seen 50,000 times, they'll conk out in the middle of it, and then I can gently place them in their beds, and they sleep a little bit better. 
but they've actually done really good sleeping <clears throat> here. Lily loves her new room. Elliot loves his new room. Um, Lily has an Ikea bed that we can flip. So it can be like a bed or it can be a loft bed. And we flipped her bed and turned it into a loft bed, which she thinks is the best thing ever. And after we did that and she got very attached to it, I read the little warning on the side of the bed that says, do not allow children under the age of six on this bed when it is lofted. She looks like a six-year-old. And I was like, whoops, she's like the size of some six-year-old, so it's <laughs> fine. And Ish. Elliot needs some help getting down, but he can get up that thing, no problem. Yeah. And down, it's just more like he wants to like get down, and he doesn't always think about where his feet need to be to hit the ladder. But she, she's gotten up and down it so many times now that I'm not worried about her. And she thinks it's the best thing ever. Um. And then there's so many potties here that she's like, my potty, my potty. And she doesn't have to go far anytime she says she has to go to the bathroom. It's the same amount of potties. No, yeah, we have four. Oh, there's one more. There's the powder room. Yeah. The the biggest difference is there is a bathroom on our main living space floor. Because <laughs> our old house, the bathrooms were on the same floor as the bedrooms. Because it was a split ranch or a quad. And it meant that anytime you had to go to the bathroom, if you weren't in a bedroom, you had to go up or downstairs. So it would take it. It would take a little bit longer to get Lily to a bathroom. But now she's never more than like twenty steps away from a bathroom. And then we've got so much space in our bedroom now that I don't know what to do with. We had carpet cleaners come through because ten out of ten recommend having carpet cleaners come through. Before you move in all your furniture? Yeah. <laughs> um, but we did it after we moved in all of our furniture because we just wanted to get into the new space. Um, maybe we should have waited a day or two, but no. I don't know. Um, but we managed to fit every, all of our bedroom furniture in the master bathroom except for the bed. And that there was a 0% chance that that would have happened at the old house. And like us still be able to use the bathroom. Because oh, yeah. we could still use the bathroom. <laughs> As a bathroom, like to brush your teeth and stuff. It was crazy. Um, the views here are gorgeous. We have some nice trees. We see family of deer all the time. The dogs don't know what to do about it. They keep barking at them. It's pretty funny. Let's talk about the old house, though. Mm -hmm. I'm going to miss it. but all the memories. Yeah. So that's where our children grew. Like Only our... the good memories. Because <laughs> we're still in your contract. <laughs> Their own. That's where like the children like came home and like learned to crawl and learned to walk. I was talking about all the upgrades that we did. So we moved in and um It, it was, was it was move in ready. No, it wasn't. But <laughs> nothing like it was move in ready in the sense that like everything functioned and you could live in the space. But like nothing had been upgraded. Like we were, we both lived with our parents. We were a year into our professional jobs. We didn't have couches. Mm -mm. We had your dad's recliner chair. And your grandma's recliner chair. <laughs> and my grandma's <laughs> recliner chair. And then you swore up and down that we're not going to get a dog. We weren't married either. Yeah. Uh, because we bought it in July twenty. 14 yeah and we, we got married, married until and, 2015 as stated previously by my sign oh, that i described that sign yeah um and then uh you and i mm -hmm. are you your friend of a friend of you shared a picture of a bunch of dogs a litter of dogs yeah, and and nowhere we, indiana we were not gonna get a dog until after we got married and then we saw these puppies and I forwarded on the post to Joe and said, oh, hey, look at these cutie patooties. Danger, danger, <laughs> danger. <laughs> um, and we both like and, hypothetically yeah. pick the same dog. Like, yep, if we, we were to get the. If we were to get a dog, I'd pick this one. And we both picked Zoe. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's like, well, I guess we're doing this then. <laughs> Because Zoe was still available. I mean, obviously, she lives in our house with us now. Um, she's somewhere that I don't... She's probably sleeping. Um, and so then we, we had a puppy. 
whose birthday was the same day that we closed on the house. Be what? Yeah, Zoe's birthday. Zoe was born the day we closed on that house. On the the old house. Yes, on the old house. I'm like what? No, no, dogs are not born in January. I understand now. Okay. <laughs> Joey is sleep deprived and Bengals game distracted. Well, there's a flag, and I'm like, why is there a flag? This is ridiculous. Another, another flag. flag. Get out of here. Oh, the flags. So um, yeah. So that we got Zoe. We renovated a bathroom. We renovated the guest bathroom. We renovated the library. We tore out so much wallpaper in that house. We had a contractor come through and renovate the kitchen because for the sake of our marriage, I said, no, while us and our family have the skills and some of the tools to renovate the kitchen completely by ourselves, our marriage will not survive us trying to do that and not having a kitchen for three months. Let's get a contractor. Let me get the other beer. Okay. Keep talking. So oh, <laughs> so we had a contractor do it, and he was great to work with. Um, after he did that, we had him renovate our master bathroom, even though it wasn't huge, because I was like, well, you did that. Can you just take care of this so I don't have to worry about it? And that went really well as well. Um, so we renovated that. Lily was born. We had her room all set up. Um, we run it. We refinished. Not well. We we regraded part of the backyard to make room for a playset for Lily. And right after we did that, was when we finished off the basement. So Joe, Larry, and his dad framed up some walls. Gave us so much storage space. We had a plumber that I had to mildly argue with to move the washing machine and dryer. You didn't have to argue with him. I had to convince him. He did not see my vision until I like drew everything out for him. Because I wanted a little laundry room and a little powder room. And we made it work. Um, and so then Joe had his office space. And then soon after Joe got settled into his office space, we had people living in our basement. <laughs> that was crazy. That was a little crazy. If Elliot was any older, we would not have been able to make that work. No, and then, so your that was your mom and father, or my father-in-law. Mm-hmm. Um, fumble. Is that a fumble? I don't know. May I have some beer? And now your mom and, and Larry are like, I got the shaft. <laughs> we want to live in this basement because <laughs> this basement has a full kitchen. Mm. I don't know what to do. I have two kitchens. Well, the hope is that the basement kitchen is used for home brewing because it'll be a little bit easier to get that kitchen already for home brewing versus the one that we live in and the kids are constantly getting snacks from because now we have an actual pantry that both children can open and Elliot's favorite thing to do is open the pantry point to the bars and say bar 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 (laughs) more aggressively (laughs) until you convince him that no he cannot have a bar right now (laughs) <laughs> these are like a nutrition bar they're like nutrigrain bars but they're kids versions um these specifically that we have are sesame street so he likes to request he likes to request elmo bibber over does he say grover for the sake of this podcast yes <laughs> he didn't write down the beers oh sorry. But i cracked open a beer you did so we are now drinking a Big Timber Brewing Company Fest beer, which is 5.6% ABV. This pale German style lager features bright malt character and light bitterness, light in color and flavor. Oh wait, lighter in color and flavor than a traditional Oktoberfest. This style is now the most popular beer at the famous German celebration. Um. 
so that the font is kind of weird because it is the like easy ish to it's like the easiest to read font which is black text with a white outline but the background is like the the traditional Oktoberfest blue and white check but the blue of the blue and white check is West Virginia so it's a funky shape check yeah that's pretty cute So this is a fest beer, mm-hmm. and um, has a taste like a very delicious fest beer. Best Buy two one twenty three. So we are still within the Best Buy date on this one. The other one's probably shorter because it's an IPA. They have a new Magnum PI, but what was wrong with Tom Selleck? They should have just done a Tom Selleck again. Also, I don't think Magnum PI had a ma- mustache in that clip. He he needs a mustache. It's like a requirement. That in Hawaiian shirt that's constantly unbuttoned to some extent. I don't know what that is. Because you had cable growing up. I watched a lot of interesting shows. Because it was all that was on the TV. Um, so yeah, so we have, so we're in the new house. We've been in the new house for about a week. We we're gonna miss the old house. Some things I'm definitely not gonna miss, like having to go upstairs to go to the bathroom, no matter where I am. Um, and then the views here are gorgeous. We don't get to see planes as often, but we can hear trains, and it was pretty hilarious the other day. Lily and Elliot were playing on the back deck and they heard a choo-choo train and then the two of them start saying choo-choo, choo-choo at the top of their lungs, <laughs> like trying to call the choo-choo train to come closer to them so they can see the choo-choo train because they don't quite understand how train tracks work yet. So that was pretty cute. Um, like I said before, we see deer all of the time. So our new joke with our friends is watch out for deer as they leave our house though other than family the only people that have been here so far are steven hillary and little baby veda but i mean we've been here for a week so been a little bit too busy to host there's a giant playroom in the basement which the kids are starting to make their own space there's even like a little So when the previous owners renovated the basement, they put a dry bar under the stairs. And since the dry bar can only go so far before it's hard for an adult to deal with that space, there was some dead space under the stairs where they cut out a hole, framed the hole, and then carpeted it. So it's like a little clubhouse for small children. Though I guess it's more of a clubhouse for dogs because the dogs found it before the kids did. Because I, um, <clears throat> like I was downstairs with the kids a few times, like waiting for them to notice it. Cause I didn't want to point it out to them. I wanted them to find it organically. And then I was downstairs doing something. And all of a sudden I, I'm like, I can't find Zoe. Oh, she's hanging out in their clubhouse. <laughs> okay. Zoe found it first. You win the prize, Zoe. We have some gorgeous front windows in the front where it creates, since our house is mostly South facing now. Which I guess the old house was south facing, facing too. We get a lot more sun in this house. The kids set their chairs up in one of the um, big patches of sunlight. So they can sit in the front of the house in the sunshine yeah. and hang out. And it's like when I can't find them and I'm in a panic looking for them. Four out of five times they're sitting in those chairs. It's pretty cute. Oh no, our executive producer got a little fussy. As I said before, they've been sleeping pretty great in this house. But Lily did smash Elliot's finger this morning. No, that was yesterday. He still showed me his finger today, so it must be hurting him a little bit. Mm. I will go take care of Mr. We will be right back. Oh! 
Yeah. Yeah. Are you gonna are you gonna have to bleep yourself? I'm gonna have to bleep myself. I don't know. Well, the Bengals are going to the playoffs. Yeah, this is the playoffs. Well, this is the wild card. So like they're going to like the playoff playoffs. Elliot's back in bed. Con of new house. I have to go up a whole flight of stairs. So much exercise. But pro, the doors here do not squeak. So it's excuse me, it's a lot easier to sneak out of Elliot's room. Good game, good game. I don't know if I would say that. <laughs> I, I don't know either. I don't know. I just live here. That that last minute. Flag, 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 flag. I missed that because I was putting Mr. back to bed while he was yelling, Daddy! So, you're welcome. I, I could have passed him off to you. Well, I had to turn off the monitor because the monitor's not charged. Ah. Oh, man. No, there was no opportunity, dude. They all missed. So, um, let's see here. Where was I? Where was I? We were talking about this beer. Yes. So it's a very yummy fest beer. Um, yeah, very good. Very, um, traditional fest beer, I would say. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm a Martzen guy myself, but I I drink, I don't discriminate. I drink fest beers. I drink (laughs) Martzen's. Um, this is a bit lighter than, um. Because it's a best beer, but it's light, yeah. but it still has that toasty, uh, roasty. Notes. Yeah, it's still got some really good flavors to it. Yeah, it's not. No one could call this beer bland. No, no, no. No, I really like it. Mm-hmm. Would drink again. Bummed we only have one can, but such is life. Maybe we'll have to go out there. Maybe. Yeah. Five hours away. You said five hours, forty-five minutes. That's a little bit more than a day trip, I think. It is a little bit more than a day trip, but <laughs> totally not out of possibility with mm. the kids. Because I'd say, like, we're getting to the point where, like, anything over six hours would start to be a tricky car ride with the kids. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, we went to Myrtle Beach when Elliot was eight weeks old. <laughs> yeah, but they were both in diapers. Which makes things a little bit easier. Now we're going to have to contend with the toddler potty stops. Or the preschooler potty stops. Because Hillary was asking me today. She's like, at what age is Lily not a toddler anymore? And I was like, I don't really consider her a toddler anymore. Um, I, I consider her a preschooler. I'd say probably like potty training. Like she's potty trained now. So that takes her out of toddlerdom. But I don't know. I, I don't. Eventually I'm going to get together with her and Katie again. And we'll just do like a big giant mom's chat. Ah. I got plenty of wine in the basement now <laughs> because within half an hour of getting into the new house, we had neighbors knocking on our door, introducing themselves and giving us wine. What is this craziness? I love the West side. The West side's <laughs> the best. And then a few days later, different neighbor knocked on our door and gave us brownies. And I was like, Oh, hi, nice to meet you. I got two kids, but they're both napping right now. She's like, Oh, you enjoy these brownies. I'm going to go away because nap time with two littles <laughs> is sacred. Yeah. <laughs> Get it, mama. So I'm it's, super excited. It seems like there are kids. Yes, like, there are for sure kids. Little kids. Mm-hmm. Like not necessarily Lily's age, but maybe a little older. A little older, but not like out of the realm of like, hey, we can run around the neighborhood together. Right. So it seems like it's going to be a good fit. Mm-hmm. I mean, we kind of betted that it will be a good fit. Yeah, we're we're kind of we betted on that. Yeah, we we got at least a few years in this house <laughs> before we're going anywhere else. I am not packing up again for a while, because man, that was rough. So, um, so I guess to update on the game, uh, the Bengals won. Did we already say that the Bengals won? Um, I mean, you said that, but I don't know if you're allowed to put that in your own podcast. <laughs> the Bengals won. <laughs> Um. Yeah, yeah, Jesus. Hubbard uh, is player of is player of the game with his hundred yard touchdown. 
<laughs> it was 98 yards. It oh was, my goodness. It was a <laughs> fantastic. I can't believe you did that. I know. I should always know where the ball is and be ready to catch it. Just be out there ready to catch balls at all times. That is my quote. Use it out of context all of the time. I can't believe that. Like that was a fantastic, like, wow, <laughs> play. Mm-hmm. The Ravens were on the one yard line or the two yard line. Yeah, and trying to the quarterback sneak, or I guess they they, they were just trying to like lift him up and over the pack. And sounds... in the process of doing that, the ball got knocked out because he had a very he didn't have the best grip on the ball, and we caught it. I say we like I was out on the field. Caroline and I didn't it. just get winded running up the steps to go get Elliot. <laughs> <laughs> no, Caroline, you're the naked person on the field. Yes. <laughs> right. Getting <we're> chased by <laughs> security. <laughs> 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 that that that's your contribution. <laughs> that would be my contribution. I will not do that, but not naked. I guess streaking. Like streaking is naked. Oh, okay. I see. No, what what I would be is I would be the mom that runs out onto the field after her small child that ran out onto the field to grab small child and get them off of the field before small child gets tackled by security. Ah, uh, yeah. That was a thing that happened at some point, but I don't remember when. That would be Elliot. He would try to. He does. He's very interested about football. Mm-hmm. So, um. Fun facts about our new house. Well, uh, just about our us in our new house. Um, the dining room table that we have in our dining room, it, we've talked about it before, but it's been a hot second. We is, have. I believe we have. Is Joe's grandma's old dining room table. Like, at one point we had the whole set. We no longer have the whole set. Um, But we have her dining room table that we used to use as our kitchen table slash dining room table. Because we just had, like a kitchen slash dining room in the old house. Well, now we have a dining room and an eat-in kitchen, so we needed another table. Well, we've been very fortunate that the times that we have been moving into houses have been times where elderly grandparents are moving out of their house. So when we moved into our old house, Joe's grandma was moving out of her house into a retirement community, so we got some furniture from her, including that dining room table, well, now Joe's Oma is getting ready to move into a retirement community as well. But, I mean, we could still take a kitchen table from her house, and I don't know if she would notice, because there were three kitchen tables in Oma's house. <laughs> but now there's only two, because one of those kitchen tables is in our kitchen. So our genera- our generational wealth is not in money, but in furniture. And we are very fortunate those Germans never get rid of anything. They really don't. <laughs> so we have Oma's old kitchen table in our kitchen now, and it's getting new life. And we have one more beer, one more celebratory beer. Yeah, we save the best for last. Maybe. We'll see. It looks like it's going to be a good beer. Uh, dude, if this is a 10 percenter. <laughs> no, it's only a 6.5. er Okay. I thought she was going to say no. It's only like 8.9. But it's another 16 ounce can. So these are some big boys. Yeah, it's one of their like flagship beers. I think. My face just made a weird noise. Your face hole? Yep, my face hole. So we are going to play the Buffalo Bills in Buffalo on Sunday. And Why do we have to go to Buffalo? I don't know. And either the Dallas Cowboys or the Buccaneers will play the 49ers. I mean, at least the game's at three this time. So it's not... I don't know what time it is right now, other than hella late. So it's not 11.30 when the game ends. <laughs> How much is this? This is an eight, an eight, what did I say? You said 
No, you said six five or something like that. You said eight. I said eight nine, as a joke. These are jokes. Okay, so this is a porter, also by Big Timber. Ooh, that looks pretty. So I don't know if it's like a coffee porter, but it says chocolate coffee balanced. Um, Big Timber Porter. I, I mean, that might just be their description because usually that side of the can has a description on it. At least it did for the other two beers. I don't see any, like, written description. I definitely get the coffee. Um, you think they added coffee? Uh, either that or they roasted it enough where it tastes like coffee. Oh, yeah. I can. I just need to wait for the head to dissipate. Or, sorry, the froth. Because that's what the gnome calls it. Because he didn't want to call his patreon special <laughs> segment the, f- the head don't know why he's missing out well apparently we were on an episode of that huh we were so amidst all of that craziness <laughs> did, it, did he post it not yet but he might by the time this posts he hasn't posted the drinking with the gnome maybe we did a bad job <laughs> Well, no, he didn't post the schnapps episode until like a week after we did the beer episode. Ah. So he's just behind. I think he he's more, he's better about getting the, um, the Cincy Brewcast, or sorry, the Cincinnati Brewcast. Drink. That's what Julia says. Hmm. He's more concerned with getting that out on time than... Drinking with a gnome. So I'm sure we will be on an episode. We will, like, he will post that episode. I don't think it will be the episode at the beer fest or beer event that will never see the light of day. I don't think we, I don't think we did anything that would merit that. (laughs) We just poked beers. Yeah. So while all this was going on, we managed to get a sitter the last week of the year so we could attend the last Thursday of the Chris Kindle market out at the logger house. And we ran into the gnome and Julia. We ran into a lot of people. We did run into a lot of people (laughs) and we got to poke some beers. That was very fun. That was fun. But you'll have to, we won't talk about that because it's not posted yet, but yeah. um, You'll have to subscribe to Drinking with the Gnome. Yes, which is... And listen to that episode. Yeah, which isn't like a super active um, podcast channel. So like if you're looking to add a smaller podcast into your podcast queue because you don't have time for a podcast that has like a thousand episodes, Drinking with the Gnome is great for that. Let's talk about this beer. It is very coffee. I'm not sure if I get much of the chocolate, but I haven't. Uh, my froth has gone down a little bit, so that makes it a little bit easier to get to the beer. I mean, chocolate is a typical description for porter. Anything dark. Yeah. Roasty, dark. I mean, I'm definitely getting roasty. You get that chocolate flavor. Or chocolate notes, not flavor, because they don't put flavoring in it. Yeah. But it's like you said, it's the way they they roast it. And the, the malt, the grain belt might have some chocolate in it, but. I don't think they actually put chocolate in it uh, necessarily. I think it's just a flavor. Yeah, I'm not sure. Let me see if I can find more on their website. But they might have put coffee in it. 
that's why I was curious because usually usually when it's a, when it's a coffee something mm-hmm. they add the coffee well it's the top of their staples so it's one of their like super like always on draft beers Okay, here's the description from Untapped. Okay. Our porter pours a deep, burnt umber, umber hue with a tan head. Packed full of complex flavors and aromas, you will find strong notes of coffee and dark chocolate with subtle hints of tobacco and dried fruit. Mildly sweet and slightly dry, it leaves with the rich flavors lingering on your palate. That tracks. Also, I'm pretty sure those are fireworks you're hearing because of the Bengals one. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, I'm hearing something. I was like, I don't hear a child crying, so that's not somebody falling out of bed. Oh, wait, it's probably fireworks because we're still on the west side, hun. <laughs> I got some bottle rockets we can set off. I'm good. <laughs> I don't want to lose a finger. <laughs> yeah, let's keep all of our fingers attached, please. Yeah, that's exciting, though. I mean, they, they've only won two playoffs in my lifetime. Two playoff games. Wow. Okay. It was like it was like two playoff it was like one playoff game before the big streak last year where we made it to the big game or the superb owl. <laughs> and now we'll see what happens this year. I mean, they've made it to the playoffs. Yeah. It's that they haven't won a playoff game. Well, we until were twenty twenty. We had Marvin two. Lewis for way too long. So I know like three things about football and that is one of them that and that the Brown family is very cheap, which makes it hard for us to get good players. The Brown family is a lot of things that I don't think I'm allowed to say <laughs> <laughs> on a family friendly podcast <laughs> platform. Yeah. This is really good beer. Um, thank you, Matt, for giving us these beers. They're very tasty. We need to shout out who we got them from. Yeah, who is Matt? So Matt, a.k.a. The Bruised Traveler, is the host of the Bruised Traveler Outcast podcast, the Hustle and Bruise podcast. So we made friends with Matt, and Matt gave us beers from West Virginia before his next trip to West Virginia, because he's currently skiing in West Virginia. Probably. At this time, yeah. (laughs) At the time of recording. Yeah. (laughs) I'm hoping we can get him out to 13 below because he said he hadn't been before. And I'm like, what? You're like down the street from us. We should meet up there sometime. Yeah. Or we could. um, Yeah. I mean, it's a, I like 13 below. Mm -hmm. Well, when he saw our beer fridge, he was like, whoa, you guys are bruised travelers because we just have tons of stickers on our beer fridge. Well, a bruised uh, traveler is someone who travels more than five steps for beer. Uh, like, is that, is, multiple breweries. Is that the definition? That is my definition. <laughs> Basically, like you don't just go to the same brewery or like the same three breweries. You go to different breweries to get different experiences yeah. with or without oh. the children. You do you, boo. Yeah, I mean, we we do seek out breweries um Mm -hmm. that is a thing that we do and we bring children to breweries even children who don't nap which is a terrible idea don't (laughs) don't do that we took lily and elliot to 13 below on friday the 13th because it seemed like a good idea at the time (laughs) until lily decided that she did not want to sit still because she wanted to dance and skate and then i I had stern words with her, and she had feelings about that, and she was mad at me. She was a little mad at you. It was pretty adorable, <laughs> mostly because she wasn't mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that daddy, he just says terrible things, doesn't he? <laughs> oh. He said things like, don't run in front of people carrying their beer, because <laughs> you'll trip them and spill their beer. Don't ask random people what game they're playing in the middle of their conversation. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Let's put a bow in this. So yeah, these are all tasty beers. Thanks a lot, Matt. We appreciate it. Or the Bruised Traveler. My sister, um, 
Am I supposed to drink now since I said his name like five times? It's Matt slash the Bruce Traveler. Okay, yeah. Because in his other podcast, he goes by Matt, right? Hustle and Bruce. I haven't listened to Hustle and Bruce yet. I just finished all of the Bruce Traveler, so adding Hustle and Bruce to my queue was my next thing. Well, Thanks I, for calling me out for that one. I don't think he's a... Sin- I don't know, actually. I don't think... I don't think they say his name. <laughs> I I listen to Hustle and Burrs more than the Cincinnati, than the the Bruce. Traveler it says with Matt Outcast. Damaris, so he totally puts his name in this one. Yeah, so um, he is incognito in one, but he has he puts his name out there in the other. So I think we can say his name. Matt is also a real estate agent, mm-hmm. which is why oh he's a hustler, baby. Because when the market goes cal- goes calm because it's between Thanksgiving and Easter or whatever, you need to have some kind of side gig and be a hustler, baby. <laughs> and uh, sometimes he slings beers at Narrow Path. Yeah, we went to Narrow Path and we missed him because he like was slinging beers the next day. And we're like, ah, but it's so far away. It is. It's very far away. <laughs> it's even <laughs> further away. Well, maybe not. It's probably about the same. Yeah, we'll see. Let's put a bow on this. Um, anything else you wanted to say? Nope. I think we covered most of it. Super excited about the new house. We have sidewalk, sidewalks, great neighbors. Moving is a pain in the butt, but More get space. movers. The movers moved three quarters of our stuff. We thought they moved like 90% of our stuff. No, your stuff multiplies when you're not looking. It does. <laughs> it really, really does. There's some stuff that I was like, didn't we get rid of that years ago? Apparently not. Well, now I got to get rid of it, but it's in the new house. <laughs> you had an entire box dedicated to incense. Oh, I forgot about that box. <laughs> Actual incense. I'm not even being... That yeah, I'm that, not even using like code words or anything. Actual incense. It, yeah, it was my incense and candles box <clears throat> that I forgot about. This entire box full of just incense. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, well, that does it for this week's show. Thanks so much for listening. Make sure to like, follow, and subscribe to us on social media. We are on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. You can follow us on all those platforms at Craft Parenting Podcast. And something about our YouTube channel, we broke 5,000 views. (gasps) Oh, snap. Yay! I I don't get it. (laughs) I don't know (laughs) how or why. Because we haven't done actual videos of us. It's because we're awesome. <laughs> we're awesome. Yes, we are awesome. You should go follow us on YouTube. Maybe we will do live. We got to figure out how to do video. Live video? I... We got to talk to the gnome. We'll figure it out. He messes it up every week, but still manages to make it work. So we I, have, I have mistakes. like three. I have like old iPhones. You do, because Lily found them. Yeah, Lily found my old iPhone, so maybe we can stream using those? I don't know. I have an iPad somewhere. I legitim- Oh, I legitimately do not know where that is right now. I packed it. Okay. It's in a box. Somewhere. In the garage. <laughs> All of our... <laughs> our life is in the garage right now. It really is. I'm like, I need a hammer. Is it just easier for me to go buy a hammer than try to unpack 15 boxes to find it? (laughs) Anyways. (laughs) If you like what you hear, please leave us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or your podcatcher of choice. Make sure to share the show. It's what helps our show grow. If you'd like to send us stuff such as fan mail, craft supplies, or sanity, because Lord knows we need some sanity right now. I about had a panic attack trying to find a can opener to make chili tonight. <laughs> I was like, I know I've seen it at some point. 
but when and where was that? <laughs> if you want to if you want to send us oh wait I just said that sanity we have PO box send it to the PO box. And all this information is available on our website, which is www.craftparentingpodcast.com. That's where we post all the show notes. Plus, hopefully we'll be writing more blog posts in the new year. We'll see what happens. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, I am at Craft Parenting Joe. And I am at Caroline Creates Crafts. And with that, I'm Joe. And I'm Caroline. See you next time on the Craft Parenting Podcast. Bye. Friday, 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 down at the Big o Sports Arena Complex, Monster Trucks, live and ready to rumble! You'll pay for your whole seat, but you'll only need the edge. So, like, when we do away games, because, like, right now, the sign just says, Bengals win, Bengals win, Bengals win, at Paycor Stadium. Like, if we if we win next week against the Bills, or when we win next week against the Bills, is the sign going to say Bengals win or is it just going to be black? How'd that work? They might have a watch party. I mean, there's totally going to be a watch party. But like in the stadium. Didn't they have a watch party in the stadium? Like they opened up the stadium? No, like the Bills stadium. Oh, the Bills stadium? Yeah. And like the Bengals stadium, they're going to like turn on all the lights and stuff. That's a given. But like the Bills Stadium, how does that work? Or is it just like a black? Is it like just like a black screen with white text? Bengals win. Everybody go home. Probably they'll say thank you for a great season. Oh, this is true. I <laughs> wasn't even thinking that. This is the PR person in me. Thank you for a great season. And this is this is why I'm not the PR person. Okay, I'm gonna go to bed now because I have to work tomorrow. Boo. <laughs>